Yeah, see that? See that crack right there? Right there. They crack that tail shaft. And you see, uh, I think you can see. I'm Marty Moore, owner and driver of the Hemi Express Wheel Standard. Welcome to my hot rod garage. Okay guys, this time on Marty's hot rod garage, if you watched that last video, you see we puked the drive shaft out of this thing. And we went over to Henderson Drive Line and Terry, Trenton, the guys over there, they got us fixed up. We got the new one in, we still had the bad vibration in it. So this week, we found that vibration. Uh, try to get where you can see here. Yeah, see that? See that crack right there? Right there. They cracked that tail shaft. And you see, uh, I think you can see, it cracked it clear around. It cracked it clear around. So there's the vent that was screwed in there. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to take some pictures of this. I'm going to call my buddy Jerry, Jerry Liller, authorized transmission, good friend of mine, and see if he's got a tail shift for 727. All right, what I want to try to do here now just get a picture of this thing. I think all these 727's tail shafts are the same. Get a picture of that, that crash. And then I'll send them to Jerry. Let me find him. And then I'll call him to see if he maybe got one and can fix me up. Jerry Lover. Authorized transmission. Okay. Give Jerry a buzz. Hello. Jerry. Hey, Marty. Hey, did you get them pictures I sent you? Uh, yeah, and you know, I, I took a quick peek at them. Uh, I didn't really study them. What, what are we dealing with? Well, I cracked the tail shaft on this thing. It's a 727. So, I'm looking for a new tail shaft. You think you might have one laying around? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I do. Uh, I'll dig one up and I'll give you a holler. But uh, did you figure out why you cracked that? Or? Well, we puked the drive shaft out of the thing. And I had Terry over at Henderson make me a new drive shaft for it. Oh, man, it's pretty. Pretty. One of them carbon fiber ones. Nice, nice. Yeah, he's my go-to also. Yep. You know, so, so. Awesome. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let me get my hands on one. All right, thanks, man. All right. Appreciate yeah, you. Man. See ya. Right. Bye. Bye. What's up, Jerry? Hey, Marty. Found your present. Oh, yeah. That's what we need right there. Yes, sir. Uh, just grabbed it. I uh, had a glass beaded real quick for you. We'll run it by the shop. Get it, uh, throw it through the hot tank. That one looks pretty good, don't it? Yeah, it looks better. Uh, reason, yep. I'm going to take it down, go ahead and rebush it for you, and uh, get a seal in here. But I'm going to run it through the hot tank. So this way here, get rid of the, uh, the sand out of this thing. Aluminum's porous, so when you go ahead and you sandblast it, the pores get uh, uh, opened up and it likes to hang onto that sand. So we'll heat it up and knock that uh, sand back out of this thing and rebush it and make it like new. Be good to go. Yes, sir. So where's that bushing go in at? Right here. Right here on the end? Yes, sir. 
you know, that's a nice bushing. You know, there's nothing wrong with that one. Yeah. But we'll, we'll put a fresh one in there. Okay. We don't want to upset Terry with that, uh, that pretty new hub. <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't want to make Terry mad. No, so, okie doke. All right, man. All right, well, then I'll get back with you here soon. All right, thanks. All righty. All right, probably the first thing we should do is get this pretty new drive shaft off here that Trent made us over at Henderson. And we can start getting that tail shaft taken off. You know, a lot of guys, I had some guys here the other day, and uh, this is just Marty's perspective. They said, boy, you've been having some bad luck with that car, haven't you? Bad luck? Bad luck? I am blessed to have a hot rod like this to work on, and a garage to work on it in. How can that be anything but bad luck? Guys, if we're car guys, if you don't like working on your car, I mean, if, if you got a, a race car or a classic car, you're gonna have to work on it. If you don't like working on it, you better sell it and get yourself a bowling ball or a set of golf clubs or something like that because these are work in progress all the time. I don't have bad luck. I am blessed, I am truly blessed to have a car like this to work on. So, Remember that the next time you're, you break something, you're going to a show or you're at your racetrack and you're like, boy, this car is such a headache. There's a lot of guys that would love to have the headache that you have. Food for thought. Count your blessings. Guys, here's another thing I should have mentioned the other day. Somebody in the comments said, hey, Shouldn't you put Loctite on them? I think these from the factory have a little, see that on there? I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, that's what that is. That's like a little thread. I don't want to say thread silver, like Loctite to keep that from backing off. See, they all have it on there. See that? Man, this is a pretty drive shaft. need a little persuasion. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Look at that. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? That's a beautiful thing right there. Now that drive shaft's out, take this cross member, we got these two half inch bolts here, and then these three quarter here, and we'll get that cross member down out of there. Well, the next thing we're gonna do is get this tail shaft housing off here. So let's get started on this thing. Jerry's here this morning from Authorized Transmission. He's gonna give us a hand. What do you think, Jerry? That shouldn't be too hard. I think we'll figure it out. Let's get this thing off here. All right, Marty. Let's uh, let's see here. Tell you what, let's let, make this a little easy here. Let's take the mount off first. Okay. Get it out of our way. Get this mount going out of here. That'll make it more gooder. Yeah, it will. A little easier to deal with. You know, I'm not real good at fixing stuff, but man, I can tear stuff up. I'm not too, uh, not too shabby about breaking it myself. Uh, you know what they say, if you're gonna be a bear, be a grizzly, right? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, let's go ahead and uh, next move here. Let's uh, unbolt the uh, Speedo cable. Okay. 
I noticed you got uh, a little close to the exhaust there at one point. Yeah, I put some tie wraps up on that. If not, I was going to have to get me a new Speedo cable there. Yeah, she may take some oil in there and drip on that exhaust eventually. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, right? Yes, sir. Hey, once you pull that clamp off, before you pull that Speedo out of there, let's uh, see what number we're on there. Okay. We can still check it from the inside, but just kind of nice to know. I don't know if you can see up close, but <laughs> the numbers are kind of right small. Here? Let's see here. 32. Uh, let me get this. 32 to 38. Okay, perfect. You it's notice there's a little line on the bottom there. Yeah, see right here? Yeah, and what it does okay. is it lines up with the, uh, there's a little dot on the bottom of that tail housing. Yeah. And that's how you set your, uh, you clock your speedo. So it hits yep. the inner gear. Mm -hmm. Move your camera around here and make sure they can see that. Right there, 32 and 38. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we can go ahead and pull this out. Probably be good. Just let that hang. There. Yeah, I just set it over right. there, out of the way. All right. All right. Well, that thing being broke like it is, you should be able to pull that end of that tail right out of there. After we take that little clip and everything off the bottom, you need a Phillips screwdriver. All right. Are we missing a screw there? Well, this is the one that just fell out. Uh huh. This fell out right there. Okay. Well, I know the threads are good in the other case. I thought I had everything I needed over here, but I didn't, did I? <laughs> they threw a Phillips screw in the mix. Okay, now there's going to be a snap ring in there, and we have to open that snap ring up to release the bearing. And then once we do that, she'll slide right out of there. Give me a flat screwdriver, Mark. Gasket sticks pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I got it. That's all right. Now here's this snap ring that you're yeah. talking about. Hey, Mark, there's some uh, snap ring pliers there in that box. Okay, we'll use the. Uh, these here. Sometimes those don't want to open wide enough to release the bearing, but can you see it okay up in there? They're tricky. You want to try and get the pliers in the middle so you open up the snap ring evenly. Shot. Let me get where I can see it here. Okay. There we go. How about that? You got her. And I need her transmission guy. Hey. <laughs> Now this, in case people are confused, this is one of those new high dollar two-piece tail shaft housings. Yes, sir. Two-piece. <laughs> Much better than the, well, maybe not. Yeah. Well, let me get the rest of this off here. I'll tell you what, I don't know what we've done before we had these tools. Oh, I know. Yeah, 
You need a job, Marty? What's that? You need a job? No. <laughs> Jobs just ruin your social life. Yeah, this is true. Might have to tap it. Some Sometimes they glue those things on there. Big drawer, Mark. One more down. Should be a room. Arapahoe. It just needed one little Arapahoe. Yeah, didn't it? you got oh, a rag. Boy. Yeah. There you go. There we go. I heard that bark ball. Oh, come on. May have to lower it down just a little. Uh oh, we got a puzzle. We got a puzzle. She's close. She's close. Might have to pry it down just a touch. Just a fuzzing. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. How about that? Yes, sir. Yeah, she's definitely a full manual. You're no governor. Yeah, don't worry about that. We got a fresh one. I'll we'll clean that up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I can see she's got a bold in sprag. That's a plus. All the goodies. I'll clean that surface off there a little bit. Yeah. Now, what's the chances, Jer, that we might have bent that shaft? No, I don't think of anything. You wouldn't have bent the shaft. Um, the only thing I'd be concerned with it, uh, but again, you have it still runs down the road as the uh, low sprag. Um, if, uh, you know, Anything that could have hurt the uh, sprag a little bit, the springs, but being a bold in, you know, should be okay. Okay, I'll clean this off and uh, I'll let you put that new one on. That works for me. Okay. All right, we're getting the new one ready to go in here. There's a new bushing in there. Boy, I like that new stuff, Jerry. That's pretty, ain't it? Yeah. Now, what was you telling me? You put the vent in here. What was we saying about that vent? Well, we measured it and we were gonna put it in the same location as this one, but after measuring and looking, and here they actually have a little gusset, okay, which helps with a little bit more oh, strength. I see right here. Yes, sir. That little gusset right there. Yeah, and uh, again, we know the U-joint broke it, but again, if that uh, if that gusset was there, who knows, you know, it right. might not have cracked. And on this one, they had actually drilled and tap right through the gusset. Oh, I see. Okay, so I moved it up a little bit yep. so we didn't disturb that gusset. That's thinking with your dipstick, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me you were, I put these seals in, I put many of these seals in, and you were telling me something that I didn't know. Yeah, and these seals here, uh, it's a, this is a dust boot, um, or an, umbria, uh, an umbrella, some guys call it that. But this here keeps keeps the dust and dirt and then the moisture gets in between it. Um, and if we get any leakage from the seal, it gets in here and there's a little weep hole in the seal here. Uh, and what happens is uh, you want this down in the bottom, okay? And the seal has a little V in the top that goes to the top of the seal, okay? And the hole in the umbrella or the dust boot would face down hmm. to let the fluids out. Guys, I was today years old when I learned that. Never knew that. Mm -hmm. So on the new one, obviously you see the V and the little weep holes on the opposite side. So this this is the top of it. Mm -hmm. Huh. 
Just like that. We pole's gonna be on the bottom. You can center it to your mount. You know your mount's we're gonna be down. Never too old to learn. <laughs> you know, so got my special, special, special socket. Tool. Okay. <laughs> That's better. Uh, okay. Now, Jerry, these like they're red. Is that paint on that, or no? Actually, the uh, everybody thinks it's paint, but it's actually a sealing agent. Uh, so when these things go in there, they warm up. They, they they get tacky, and then it helps seal them. So, but sometimes you have to put a sealer on them because the 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 uh, aluminum might be carved up a little bit from yeah. one too many seals be put in them. So, but I think she's ready to go. All right, so here you see the old one. The two-piece, we're replacing the two-piece tail shaft with one of the new single-piece tail shaft. A little more heavy-duty. Yeah. Oh, boy, look here. Mm-hmm. That was cracked even clear up in here. Yep. It was cracked twice. Okay. Oh, let's, uh, real quick before we... Right let's uh, take and slide that on her and make sure she's going to fit real nice. And Terry, uh, we're going to make sure Terry uh, is happy oh, with yeah. this. We don't want to piss him off because he, <laughs> you know what a whiner he is. <laughs> yeah. A little bit bigger than me, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's try to get the new one in there. All right, she's getting the new gasket on there. Let's see. Get as close as we can. Okay. That should be good. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, we got her there. Okay, a second here. I'm trying to center this snap ring, so I'm going to fight with it after a minute here. things going on here. We have a park rod here. We need to line that up in here and catch this park ball. That's why we have it in a low because we need a little bit of room to work because you don't have a little... It's got to get on the other side of the park ball. On the other side. Boy, that was easy. <laughs> yeah. Now you gotta fight this snapper. Uh -huh. Fight that snapper. Good here. Uh, there. That's better. That's more better? I think so. That's more better. I like more better. You need me to hold something? No, sir. Back up enough. Oh, look at that. See, that's the difference between an amateur like myself and a, and a professional transmission guy. That's the difference. Okay. Let's see. You got a regular screwdriver over here? I just want to make sure she's locked. You know what? This here will work. I just got to get in here and move this around a little bit. I just want to make sure. Yep, she's she is locked. Locked in there. Mm-hmm. All right. Want me to put them bolts back in? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Marty. Let's uh let's start running those in and we'll move on. But next up, if we're gonna get those and. Uh, before we get too far after that, we should check and make sure that the park is working correctly. Okay. Okay? Yes, sir. Well, I tell you what, Jerry. There, the other night after mm. you was here, yeah. I got some, I had some green tomatoes. 
Oh boy. And I talked Cheryl into frying them. Uh huh. Oh, them fried green tomatoes. I'll tell you what. You ever eat fried green tomatoes? Yes, I have. Oh man. If you used to take one of them things laying on the top of your head, your tongue would beat your face off trying to get to it. Uh -huh. I mean, they was that good. <laughs> They was that good. All right, there's the going on there. Got the bolts back in. So we'll put the Speedo in now, right? Yeah, that's what that's you want next? Yeah, that's what we're working on, but here, let me show you something real quick before you go okay. throwing that in there. Here, let me, let me take this here. Uh, okay, what I want you to do, Marty, is uh, take and pull that Speedo gear out of there. The gear? Yeah, it'll, co it'll come right out. Okay. It's real easy. All right, now, these gears, a lot of times on the back side, there'll be some numbers. Okay. Okay, and that tells you your speedo count, so you don't have to go ahead and... This is 35. 35. Yep. Okay, now, go ahead and slide it back in that uh, housing there. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and... Uh, you know what, I got an O-ring here. Let's just go ahead and put a fresh O-ring on. A new one? Yes, sir. We've got a small little flat screwdriver mark. Put a brand spanky new one. I love new parts. I do too. Okay. Use some of that little tranny fluid and just kind of get her a little wet. Okay. That should be good. Now go ahead and slide her back up into the, its home there. I want to make sure I get it where it was. Yeah, again, it's, you know, you know how many teeth are on there, so now you should be able to look at the uh, numbers on the housing, and right next to the, the number, the 35 is your, your, your number. There's going to be a line on the housing, and there's a little dot that's yep. casted right into that housing. See, I got our line back up right there. Yep, and that's where your strap goes. 32 to 38. Yep, and that clocks your speedo. Now what? Okay, next piece can be that little plate uh, to seal that retaining ring, that snap ring. Should be two Phillips, two Phillips screws. screws. And we're sure that the uh, snap ring get, see right there, you can see it. Yeah, that snap ring is. It's in there. In there, and she is in place. So we put our little gasket on there. We're gonna put my little bar right there, there. under your rag. Well, I had a Phillips screwdriver. Right there, she there is. You, you hit it. I hit it. I hit it good. I hit it good. <laughs> I do that to myself all day long anymore. I 
think that one screw fits this housing better than the other housing. Now what? Okay, let's throw the mount on there. Ow, ow, boy, you gotta be tough to be stupid, you know it? Ow, did you hear that crack? Ow, that's gonna leave a mark. All right, boys and girls, here she is, everything back together. All we gotta do now is test it. There she is with the one piece tail housing on it. We'll see how it does with that. All right, take her out and give her a little road test. Well, that about wraps this episode up. Took the wagon out, didn't have any vibrations in it. Made a few pretty good hits on it. Seemed like everything was fine. Uh, we took the thing out uh, Saturday night. I got a confession to make, guys. We went to, uh, I done something Saturday night and uh, I'm actually ashamed. I'm ashamed and I'm, I'm just confessing it to you here. We went to a cruise in Saturday night, I wanted to get some miles on the car, see how it went. We went to a cruise in up there. I took my buddies with me, Nick and John. They went, they went with me, rode with me in the wagon. We got up there, it's a pretty big cruise, a couple hundred cars probably. And uh, we were sitting there, we had our chairs out, and our cooler at the back of the wagon. We were all sitting around. A guy pulled in beside me and uh, parked. He got out and he had a uh, buddy, I don't know if his buddy or son or grandson, friend, I don't know what it was, but anyhow, it's paraplegic. And uh, he got the wheelchair out and uh, got him out and he, he come around and he said, uh, well, I think he said my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law is supposed to be here in a little bit with his truck. He said, I need a tailgate to change a diaper. And I just sat there. And at first it's like, I don't know if I was driving the wagon. It didn't dawn on me that I had a tailgate, but it's just like, it's like, well, I got a tailgate, and you know what I've done? Nothing, nothing. I just sat there, and I, I, I was thinking, it's like, well, I should let him use my tailgate, but then Nick and John was sitting around and a bunch of other guys, and I thought, I don't want to disturb everybody and make a move. So I done nothing, and I got home, and it's really bothered me really bothered me and what I should have done what I should have done is laid my tailgate down said Nick John you guys get up said here buddy use my tailgate and we'll stand around here you know get a wall of guys to kind of give you some privacy but I didn't but I didn't and I'm ashamed of that I am ashamed of that and if by any chance if the guy that that guy 
if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I am sorry from the bottom of my heart. And the next time you see me at a car show, if you need a tailgate, by golly, you come and use mine. You're welcome to anytime. You know, the Lord gives us these gifts to use and how we use them is up to us. So just so I throw that in, like I say, I, I, I'm ashamed of what I've done, not what I've done, but what I didn't do. And uh, I've asked the Lord to forgive me and I asked that guy to forgive me if, uh, if he sees this. So anyhow, I, I, I'll try to do better in the future, I promise guys, try to do better in the future. But anyhow, that, that's it for this episode. Got the, the uh, transmission fixed, got the new tail housing on there. Uh, Jerry from Authorize was here, great friend. Great friend, guys, you know, lots of times people see me and say, boy, you know a lot. I do not know a lot. I know a lot of people. And I am blessed to have friends. And you know, like I say, I've got, I've got guys that's, we've been buddies for years, you know, carburetor guy, transmission guy, you know, fabricators, and, and uh, it's all a close-knit community here in the car world. So, okay, that's all I got. Till next time, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Take care of each other, guys. God bless.